Hi everyone, The Lone Wolf here and welcome back for some more EVE Online. Today's video is going to be a discussion video because I want to talk a little bit about the latest dev blog that CCP released about the structure changes that are coming in the May release next month. Should be pretty interesting and I definitely am uh, in favor of these changes for as far as I can tell. So as always, if you want to read along, you can go to eveonline.com, then you can click on the articles website and then down here you will find the latest dev blocks including Forsaken Fortress coming on May the 26th. That's when they plan the May release. Uh, just a quick note on, on stuff like this, right? Rooks and Kings stream with Malordor. Um, there's also an Eve Symphony stream. CCB is really doing their best in these difficult times to bring some stuff online through their Twitch channel that could be interesting for people to watch from home. Now, it's usually at a bad time for me personally. Um, I have a pretty strict schedule, especially when I'm working. So I haven't uh, been able to enjoy any of these streams but it's worth it to uh to definitely um like uh follow them uh on, uh on on twitch itself so that you get notified whenever they come online and things like that but let's jump in on the forsaken fortress uh dev block that is coming next and well basically the change is not that huge um we are adding a new state to the structures that uh, after uh, they're not using fuel for, they haven't consumed any fuel for seven days, then they will go into a new state, uh, which is the abandoned state. And uh, in this state, there will be no reinforcement phases. So the structure will have no reinforcement phase, meaning it can be destroyed in one session. Damage cap will still be in effect if a structure is currently in a reinforced state. At the moment that it gets abandoned, that timer expires. So, um... It just means that uh, if something hasn't used any fuel for seven days, you'll be able to go through the shields, the armor and the structure in a single go. Uh, and then, uh, you know, potentially get to loot as well, because there will be no tethering uh, and no asset safety. That's, of course, very important uh, that uh, I think it's a big incentive for people to try and go after all of these really abandoned structures that have been out there for like a month or more, but potentially still have some loot in them uh, that uh, that could be a very nice incentive to try and clean up uh, space. Um, CSB also added in some diagrams, so also pretty important to note that this also uh uh, goes for flex uh, structures which is stuff like the uh, sino jammer uh, the jump gates that also require fuels as you can see here in the abandoned state you, you get uh, through the shields uh, you're always shield vulnerable you can destroy these you're always uh, then you become armor vulnerable destroy them hull vulnerable and then eventually the structure explodes i also read in uh, the comments thread that the drop rate is basically the same as anything else a 50 50 chance for whatever's in the structure uh, to be um, dropped as loot for uh, for people to, to grab. So really good stuff in my opinion. It is going to help with uh, what's also the goal here, the proliferation of structures that have no more use. Um, for uh, for the owners now uh, hopefully for them that didn't leave too much stuff behind in those structures but it is true that we are seeing a lot of bloat when it comes to just generally how many structures are uh, throughout uh, new eden i think in nullsec it's even worse than what we see in highsec and there's some system in in highsec where i really see a hell of a lot of uh, of structures um, so uh, that is the change in a nutshell. There is some stuff I think that, that can be interesting here as well. Uh, there is of course one big drawback to this idea in general. That is that uh, some players uh, might take a break from EVE Online sometimes because they want to, sometimes because they have to. And uh, if they do this before uh, or they started this before this change was announced, of course they assumed that uh, whatever's in that structure will still fall under asset safety even if they get war decked and then the structure is destroyed in the meantime unfortunately that will not be the case that's really the one big drawback uh, to this on the other hand this is also the reason why ccp is giving us this news a month ahead of time and that they announced that the change uh, will basically be the start of those seven days regardless of what happened before the patch itself so you always get a month and seven days to hopefully catch uh, this information and if you still 
have an, a structure that you know is going to be abandoned and you won't have really a lot of time uh, to get rid of things, know that you can just at this point log in as an alpha clone and right click your structure and then just put everything into asset safety it will no longer be in the structure it will be in whatever the option is that asset safety uh, gives you um, it will cost a little bit to get the stuff out but it will again be in a much safer place uh, than in a structure that will potentially become abandoned after the patch hit. So that is something uh, that uh, I fully understand. On the other hand um, I, I can see what the goal is here and uh, it's just a part of reality. Uh, I don't think that many players keep abandoned structures with a lot of stuff, a lot of valuable stuff either. I mean my first reflex is always to move uh, some of the, the more expensive uh, things out into an NPC station either to Jita or to something close by depending on what I'm planning to do with it. Um, the proliferation itself I think is real uh, especially because of the unanchoring mechanic of, uh, of structures at the moment. It is a little bit of a pain in the butt. It takes a long time for your structure to actually unanchor. On top of that you have to basically plan for that exit and then be ready to scoop your structure right away because there is this small window where someone else that sees that uh, your structure is an anchoring, uh, figures the timer out, could actually come in here and then steal your structure right from under your nose. It does give him uh, a suspect timer, but that's something that uh, lots of players will be willing to risk in order to get that free structure. So it's basically a little bit of a hassle uh, to uh, to unanchor, uh, to undeploy one of these structures. And so I think most people, considering the relatively low cost, especially for the smaller structures, um, that they just leave them behind and uh, they move on to their next phase and uh, don't think about them again. So uh, overall, um, yeah, this, this does mean that there will be a lot of cleanup to do. Uh, some players will probably uh, suffer the consequences of this change as well, but hopefully it's not that many of them and hopefully this video can also help uh, with... Um, with uh, getting the word out there, uh, if if you've uh, if you've done this yourself, you've got a structure, you've got some stuff in there, but you're not actively playing Eve Online, you can log in as an Alpha clone and you can actually put your stuff in asset safety because right now, of course, there's only the fully online state and then the uh, low power state, which both of them still have the asset safety mechanic. Uh, some interesting stuff that I found in the comments on uh, some of these uh, of the threads, whether it's on Reddit or on the forums itself, is that this does uh, provide an interesting opportunity potentially for leadership to uh, scam their, uh, their their own members so be a little bit careful on that one again the asset safety trick that you can do that right now with just a right click uh, is something to keep in mind because what you could have happened is that um, you know uh, leadership could basically lock you out of the structures and make sure that you can't refuel them and so basically force structures to go into that abandoned state then they'll blow them up uh, themselves and then they'll just have the 50 50 uh, chance for uh, for whatever was in there uh, to uh, to get scooped so uh, still be a little bit careful because this is even online stuff like that can and will eventually happen um, Especially if you have like a very large corporation that eventually like dries up. Lots of people don't play anymore, but they know that those players that uh, that have basically abandoned the corporation uh, have lots of stuff in that structure. They may just end up trying to destroy it themselves in order to get to all that loot. Very interesting thought, but of course, uh, keep in mind that one option still exists. You don't even have to be in the structure, if I'm not mistaken. You can just get your stuff into asset safety as long as it's in low power. So even uh, if if you can't fuel it anymore there's still that opportunity uh, for you to get your stuff out uh, without actually having to be in the structure itself um anything else oh yeah, yeah some people will be interested in knowing uh what's the lowest cost needed in order to you know avoid this from happening so in other words what is the cheapest uh service module to um to 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 bring online in order to you know stay in in uh, the high heightened state or, or in the fully online state uh, i would say i don't think that uh, really all alternating is a good idea because there is a big upfront cost for uh, activation cost for uh, for your services uh, that's uh, that's that's very expensive and i think it's more than seven days consumption as well so the easiest way and uh, the most cost efficient way is just to 
take the cheapest service and then to bring that online and keep it online to keep your structure fueled now um, some people may say well isn't that something that's very tedious uh, no not really if you want to you can put years of fuel fuel in your structure uh, as well uh, without any problem it's a massive fuel bay it's a bit of an investment and if I'm not mistaken that fuel can drop uh, if your structure is eventually destroyed but uh, it does basically guarantee that uh, that you won't get into the, the abandoned state for a very very long time so on to the actual uh, services for the citadels so that's uh, for instance the astros that you're seeing here it is the cloning facility with a um with a general uh, consumption of 10 fuel blocks uh, per cycle but remember uh, every class you've got citadels you've got refineries and you've got the uh, engineering complexes all these have a bonus to fuel consumption for some of these uh, uh, some of these uh, services and so the cloning uh, structure is specifically meant for citadels and you get a 25 percent reduction of those 10 fuel blocks per cycle so you go down to 7.5 fuel blocks per cycle uh, that's the cheapest you can get for the refineries it's actually a Hyacioda research lab that's also uh, at 10 um, 10 fuel blocks uh, per cycle so same thing you get that 25% bonus uh, from the hull itself in a refinery don't put a cloning service but put that Hyacioda research lab and keep that fueled and then finally we've got the engineering complexes where the well it's a bit of a choice really the reprocessing facility is also 10 fuel blocks a cycle same thing you get that bonus again if you deployed your uh, engineering complex on a moon um, uh, and you can actually put a uh, moon drill in there that one is only five uh, fuel blocks a cycle so that's actually the cheapest option there um Overall, it's still a decent cost. I gotta say, in my own uh, Citadel, uh, I do only have the cloning uh, service up and running. And, uh, well, it's, it takes a little bit of a commitment, either cost-wise or time-wise. Uh, but if you keep it to, the, really, uh, to, to the, the minimum, it is, in my opinion, very, very doable. Uh, anything else that I noted down here... Um, yeah, as I've said, this also counts for flex structures. Now, flex structures is only uh, like sino jammers, jump gates, and things like that. I think a state like that would be uh, a very good idea for uh, like the mobile depots and, and, and for the smaller deployable structures as well, so that eventually you can actually uh, clean those up uh, as well. I, th I think um, it's not as easy to, to uh, find a trigger to get to that abandoned state obviously in all of these structures it's very easy fueled not fueled for seven days there we go uh, we are uh, putting you in that state there are these small deployable structures that don't take any fuel so you can't use the exact same mechanic but um, I think if you want to clean that up a little bit uh, in uh, in EVE Online, then it could be worth it to look into uh, some sort of a, a mechanic that would allow them to get in the abandoned state as well. And then, of course, uh, one of the uh, things that people that are for this, uh, this change uh, would like to see uh, get removed is either the damage cap. Uh, because well uh, you want this stuff to be cleaned up it's abandoned it's supposed to be abandoned and yet that damage cap is still there it's going to take you a decent amount of time to get through the shields the armor and the structure in a single go it's a pretty serious time commitment if I'm not mistaken it's like almost an hour or just over an hour uh, to get through everything and then it also depends on the size and things like that so it's not that easy to just say oh it's that much time now to uh, get rid of one structure but it's a serious time commitment that i understand some people would like to see uh, cut down i for instance uh, could see um you know get rid of sh the shields in that phase for instance if it's completely abandoned nobody's there to uh, keep the reactors for the shields up and running armor and hull that's what's left uh, and then you can keep the gamut uh, the the damage cap uh, or uh, you get rid of the damage cap I, c I can understand uh, wanting that I'd be more of you know cut the uh, amount of time uh, down a little bit but but keep the uh, the damage cap here so get rid of the shields that would make sense to me as well on the other hand this is already uh, a very good move forward to clean up and to be able to actually go after uh, structures as loot pinatas this is just continuing the trend that we um, I've talked about quite often about the structures at first you know they want people to adopt them they want people to use them so you get bonuses you get nice services and they are 
overpowered in the defensive way in how easy they are to deploy and all of that stuff and now we are starting to uh, be hit with the nerf bat here and there in order to curb uh, the uh, the usage of them a little bit and especially in order to get a, a turnover uh, a cycle for creation and destruction and uh, really incorporate that into the sandbox in a more balanced way than when you want uh, them to uh, to get adopted by the player base and eventually we'll see the same thing with the triglavian ships of course um, one last thing of course it's seven days which is not that much time um, here I, I can understand that there's people that say this is maybe a little bit short give it like two weeks or a full month uh, on the other hand all right this is even online we want stuff to to move as well and uh, part of this current era where CCP is well only announcing stuff beforehand when they feel like you know, we might need to do that for, for at least a part of the player base, which in this case is, is very specifically, of course, players that uh, are not too actively playing uh, EVE Online, have structures, have stuff in there that will eventually be abandoned. They now have plenty of time to get ready for that. And after that, we're on the one week cycle. Uh, I personally don't mind. Two weeks would be okay as well. A full month, I think that that's, that's giving too much leeway, uh, to be honest, um, you know, if you want structures, you gotta use them, uh, you gotta fuel them. Uh, I think that that only makes sense. So overall, yeah, my impressions on the Forsaken Fortress update is very positive. Uh, I don't mind it at all of course all of my structures are constantly fueled i want people to use these services they're there for people uh, to use them uh, as as much as possible that's that's basically why i have all of these structures i think it's going to be uh, very nice as well in wormhole space it's going to be a lot easier to you know find a wormhole blockade it uh, and then eventually get rid of everything same in nosic clean up sovereignty that you have conquered is going to be a lot uh, easier uh, while still a, a pretty decent uh, time uh, time commitment of course uh, but a lot more doable um, and as a result yeah I am I'm am definitely very positive on this change especially especially with the carrot added of course no asset safety in that state does mean that you can potentially be very rewarded for the efforts that you put in let me know in the comments what your thoughts are especially if you see any uh, like uh, problems or scenarios where you do potentially see uh, that uh, that something might not be uh, where it should be but my impressions are that this is definitely a good change uh, and uh, yeah also uh, if you have any real worries or something like that, definitely go to that dev blog and then go through this thread. Give that feedback to CCP. As always, try and keep it constructive. Try and, uh, you know, make a good logical case for whatever changes that you you, you don't agree with. Um, and then uh, put that down. But uh, yeah, I feel like uh, this is coming. Uh, we get the abandoned state and we'll see a lot more destruction in the structures. Hopefully, that also means an increase in demand for the BPCs that I produce and perhaps even for minerals and pi materials because well those are struggling a little bit with uh, low demand as well could be very interesting for the market too thank you very much for watching guys and as always i'll see you next time